Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo, Configuring Approval Policies. In this video, we are going to look at how the Tenant Administrator configures approval policies. This video is divided into two main sections. The first section will show how to configure an approval policy. The second section will show how approvals can be associated with catalog objects and action commands as part of defining service entitlements. The first step in setting up approvals is configuring the approval policy. In most cases, approvals will be created and managed by someone with tenant admin privileges. However, users with approval admin privileges can also create approval policies. Approval policies contain a name, description, and other attributes which describe the process flow of the approval. The approval type determines the type of request the approval can apply to and it also determines the insertion point into the life cycle or phase. Let's look at the different types of VCAC approvals and how they are used. Each approval policy has a policy type. The policy type determines what catalog object that policy can apply to. For example, a catalog item request approval is more generic than a catalog item request virtual. The approval type for a virtual machine is much more specific in that it allows the user to edit attributes like vCPU count, memory, and storage, which may be specific to a virtual machine catalog item. When the admin tries to associate the approval with a catalog object like service category, they will only be presented with approval policies appropriate for that catalog object. The approval type also determines the approval insertion point or phase. In our virtual machine request approval example, there are two approval phases, pre- and post-provisioning. Each approval phase can have multiple levels of approval. The conditions that trigger each approval level, the approvers, and what fields can be edited by the approver are all controlled by the administrator. So now that you understand some of the concepts behind approvals, let's demo how to configure one. To configure approval policies, on the Administrators tab, Click the Approval Policies command on the left. To create a new approval policy, click on the green plus sign. In order to simplify this demo, though, we are going to examine an existing extra-large machine approval policy by editing it. All policies have a name, description, and policy type. Approvals can have a status of active or draft. For now, we will keep it in the draft mode and activate it later. This is a policy that will be triggered when a request for a virtual machine exceeds the standard size and cost. Virtual machine approval types have pre and post provisioning phases. This approval only has pre provisioning phase defined. Within the pre provisioning phase, there are two approval levels. First, let's examine the manager approval level by editing it. The first thing to define is the conditions that will trigger the approval. For example, we have defined thresholds for CPU, memory, and storage that will trigger the manager to approve. The next step is to define who the approvers will be. In our case, it will be the business group manager. The next step is to define which fields the approver can edit. In our example, we are allowing the approver to change the number of CPUs, memory, and storage. Now that we have completed looking at the manager approval level, Let's look at the finance level so you can see how it is different from the manager level. You will notice that the conditions that triggered the approval are very different. Instead of resource thresholds, cost thresholds trigger the approval. Also notice that instead of a single approver, anyone in the finance group can approve. Also notice that the finance group has no editable fields defined. This means the finance approvers can only approve or reject the request. We have now completed reviewing all aspects of our extra large machine approval. The next step is to activate this policy and click update to save the changes. This concludes the defining approval policies portion of this video. After approval policies have been configured, the tenant admin then needs to associate an approval policy with specific service categories, catalog items, or actions. This is done as part of the service entitlement process. Like entitlements, approvals can be configured to apply to groups of users or specific users. When approvals are applied at the global level, for example a service category, 
approvals will be required on all the specific catalog items within that category. In order to demonstrate how approvals are associated with entitlement policies, let's edit the NEF Dev entitlement we created in a previous video. We are going to add an approval to the Inventory Manager catalog item by modifying the existing Inventory Manager entitlement. Currently, there is no approval associated with this catalog item. We will assign the extra large machine approval created earlier in this video. I then click Update to make this change effective. The approval has now been associated with the catalog item. We have just demonstrated how to assign an approval to a catalog item through an entitlement. I can then add the extra large machine approval to other catalog items or configure additional approvals as needed. Please remember there are different approval types. The more generic the approval type, the more catalog objects that it can be associated with. For example, Catalog requests can be associated with service categories, catalog items, and actions. The more specific the approval type is, the more powerful it is in terms of what the approvers are allowed to do. However, it needs to be associated with a catalog item that matches the type. For example, a catalog item requests virtual approval can only be associated with a virtual machine catalog item. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was informative, and to learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available.